Hi, this is lesson 7 part 3 and I have titled this lesson Booting Linux on Zinc using the SD card and using the network. I'm Mohammed Sadri and I'm going to shortly describe to you this important concept maybe it's a kind of concept that most of the people who are using the zinc device they know but it should be a part of the tutorials so that someone that doesn't know can watch the video and learn so in the previous lesson what we learned was from where we obtain in fact the source codes for the Linux kernel and the U-boot and the procedure that we go through to compile these guys and then we had a look at in fact from where we can obtain a root file system for the Linux and where we can obtain a suitable device tree and how in fact new device trees can be generated or the current device tree that we have downloaded can be updated this we discussed briefly obviously and maybe it needs another video <coughs> and finally in practice I showed you how you can boot the Linux on the Z board using only your JTAG cable so using the JTAG cable we loaded all of the images that we were needing into the DRAM memory of the Z board and from there we started the Linux and the Linux came up completely now what's going uh, what we are going to do in this lesson <coughs> is that in most of the situations you cannot really boot your operating system over JTAG because for example the board is placed somewhere mm, to which you don't have any access you cannot connect your JTAG cable it's a kind of product so it should be a stand alone completely and as the board, board turns on the Linux should come up and as you saw in the previous lesson booting over JTAG is very slow and sometimes you may like to spend less time booting the Linux on your Zinc device so what we do in this session is we we'll review briefly how you boot Linux from the SD card and then considering the fact that if we boot the Linux uh, from the SD card every time that we want to make a change somewhere either in the Linux kernel or the configuration of U-boot or the root file system every time that we want to do that we need to in fact unplug the SD card plug it into the notebook put the files again unplug and plug into the Z board and if, if you are doing kind of development in which constantly you are using uh, you are changing something for example inside the kernel you are changing something or inside the device tree you are changing something then this gets uh, kind of problematic if you want to bring out the SD card every time and put it back so we will have a brief overview on how all of these data can be loaded to the DRAM memory of the Z board to the DRAM memory of your Zinc device from the network so in the previous video we learned how we create the U image from where we obtain the zinc z.dtb what does it mean how is it created and then we learned what is uramdisk.image.gz so we have a good in fact a background and what I want to do is in this session I want to put the necessary files on the SD card and I want to directly boot from the SD card okay so for this project we create a sample very um, easy to understand hardware and the same hardware we will use actually for next lessons in which we want to do some kind of simple driver development so let me describe the hardware to you briefly here I have the hardware that I have developed for this project it's actually a very simple design. It contains the processing system and then two XR GPIO modules. 
which are connected to the LEDs on the zinc board and to the push buttons on the zinc board. So this is a very simple design and you already know how you can create it. So I have gone through all of the required steps. The bit stream is written and now since the hardware is completely ready, you can come here and export in fact your hardware. And as you export your hardware, you can launch the software development kit environment of Xilinx and create the Zinc FSBL. Okay, so here I have the software development kit. I have created an FSBL project. And in fact, this project is using the content that I have exported from the Vivado environment to here. So the step that we want to do right now to be able, in fact, to boot everything from the SD card is we want to create a file which is called boot.bin. Let's see what is boot.bin. The boot.bin, in very simple words, is a file which is basically a container for several other files. So what, what files can the boot.bin contain? It can contain FSBL, it can contain the beta stream with which you program the PL, it can contain the U-boot, also it can contain the device tree, the root file system, and the main kernel of the Linux. So it's a bundle in which all of these files can be placed and as you create this bundle, you can copy it to your SD card. You configure the Z board using switcher, sui switchable, in fact, deep switches to bring up to boot from the SD card. And that is all you need to do. What happens is that then when the Zinc device gets booted, this file can be read from the SD card it can be extracted and then the contents of the po of the file can be placed in their suitable location and the system can be booted so for this video what we want to do is if we put the three first item into the boot.bin and we keep the other items in fact as separate entities it's notable that you can also exclude the beta stream from the boot.bin. So your boot.bin can contain only FSBL and U-boot. And that is when you don't want to program the PL at, in fact, boot time. And you plan to program the PL later. It's always possible to program the PL later using the PS. And even you can reconfigure the PL during system operation using the PS. How does the boot.bin get created? So inside our software development kit environment, there is this two menu in which contains an entry create zinc boot image. And in fact, through this dialog box, you can create the boot.bin file. For each boot.bin file that you create, Another file with the extension of BIF will be created which contains the configuration that you have used to create that boot.bin file. So here for the BIF file, what I do, I select for example output3.bif. This is the BIF file. And now through this box here, I can indicate the items that I want to include in my boot.bin file. So I say the first item should be always the FSBL. Okay, here is my project folder and I find FSBL. Obviously, it should be inside the SDK folder, FSBL, debug, and FSBL.elf. So this I will add to the boot.bin as a bootloader very simple so you don't need to change anything just press ok so now the FSBL is added here and now the second item would be the beta stream 
with which you want the practically FSBL to program your PL. This is a normal data file, so we add it to the box. And finally, the final one is the U-boot. Here is my U-boot folder, and this is the U-boot file that we created together. And the, the important point is that when you want to, in fact, use this file, which is created during compile time of U-boot, when you want to give this file to this menu here, this file needs to have a kind of extension. So the files that you use to be included inside the boot.bean, they better have an extension. So what I do here, as I have done the previous time, I delete this one. As I have done the previous time, you can rename this guy and add a .elf extension to it. So it has now the .elf extension and you can browse and add it. Okay, so now I have added this file and I keep this file also as the data data file. Okay, and I press OK and now I have one kind of bootloader. It ca they call it bootloader. I don't know how come FSBL is bootloader. I don't know. But then you have the bit stream and after that you have the U-boot and then you, you can create image. So I press the create image button and it says me the output will be overwritten I say that is okay and now um, the interesting point is that this is the command in vi with which you can regenerate the file at command prompt without the need for xsdk environment so if I go to the folder in which now the boot.bin is created what we see is the following So here is the folder. It will contain two files, boot.bin and output.bif. And the output.bif, as you see, is, is the file that contains some simple lines. And it contains the list of files that you add into the boot.bin. As I described to you the next time that I want to update this file, I don't do it through the XSDK environment. But what I do, I directly issue the command that I have. So it will be something like this. So here is the folder that contains the boot.bin file and the output tree.bif. And now suppose that I want to regenerate, in fact, boot.bin file. So let's, I remove the boot.bin file. What I do, I don't do it through the SDK environment. What I do, I directly copy paste the command that I learned here. So I use the command here and I generate the file that I want. So we come to command prompt. We, I for now paste the command that I have and then I press enter. So what's happening is that the boot.bin is created and now I can copy this file on my SD card and use it on my Z board. So the next step, I want to prepare the SD card, okay? So I have a SD card I have been already using with my Z board, but I want to show you that I have a here a unknown, unknown gigabyte size SD card, and this one, I want to show you how you prepare it, in fact, to be used with the Z board, okay? So I put it here in my notebook, and then obviously this is Ubuntu and a window pops up. The, a window pops up actually containing the files from my previous tests. What I want to do right now, I, I want to imagine that this is a kind of new SD card, it's completely new or you want to begin from scratch again, something is not working. So you want to prepare your SD card for the operation that you want to do. So here I use first the DMS command of the Linux of the Linux to s to identify which in fact device on which device on which device pass this SD card is residing here as I look it is located at uh, in SDB so what I do first I make sure that there is no content from the previous time on my SD card and everything is completely removed 
in order to do that you can simply use the very dangerous dd command of the linux kernel so if you make a mistake here you may destroy your hard drive so if you have never used linux be very careful so what i do i write blocks thousands of blocks of zero to the sd card to make sure it's completely clean so i have from dev zero to of which is dev sdb sdb and then each block i want to be 512 and then i want 10,000 blocks okay here we go and we practically write the, the most important for part of the sd card which contains the table the partition table and the data like this the boot sector and the data like this and by writing these parts all zero we are kind of sure that this sd card is ready to be formatted and to be repartitioned so what i i do to in fact repartition the sd card i just use the cfd's command and uh, i create practically two partitions the first partition will contain my boot.bin file the second partition will contain whatever data that you want during your project uh, when the linux is booted so for the first partition total free space is eight gigabytes for the first partition we don't need really that much space maybe 128 is enough and then um, i want the type of this partition to be a kind of normal fat 32 partition okay so this is a normal partition and then the next one uh, the rest of the space i give to the next one and for the type of the other one we keep it as linux so i write the partition table and i come out of the cf disk environment and i make sure that all of the buffers are flushed this is the optional now the next step is you in fact program each partition with the file system that you want so I just bring out the SD card I push it back again so that the system recognizes the new partition table and using the DMS command I make sure that the Linux kernel has identified two partitions and now using the mkfs command I can create in fact the file system that I want on the so on the partition of the SD card so mk fsv fat dev sdb1 yes I'm sorry the fact and that is it your SD card is ready you can copy your file your files into the SD card so I bring the SD card out again I push it back in inside and now the system should recognize my uh, new partition yeah so now what i do is i copy the boot.bin file into the sd card into the first partition of my sd card so i do that okay here is the boot.bin file in the first partition of my sd card and since i want to boot linux i also need the linux kernel the device tree and the in fact root file system so i also copy those files into the sd card memory okay here we go the files are here they are ready the boot.bin is here our in fact sd card is ready for the first test I just unmount it, put it back into the Z board and turn the Z board on and then we try to boot Linux for the first time over the SD card. So here I prepare the Picoca. And I turn on my Z board and as I turn on the Z board in fact I run Picocom because if you run Picocom before that it will not run it will get exited it will come out so here 
I turn on my Z board, I run PicoCom, and then I expect, in fact, the Z board to get configured and the U boot to get executed. And I pressed enter, meaning that I don't want the automated boot process to begin for now. Because if it begins, it will not end anywhere. So now I have the command prompt of the U boot and the thing that I want to do is kind of very similar similar to the previous session. In the previous session, you loaded the image of the Linux kernel, the root file system, and the device tree using the JTAG to the memory, and then you issued the bootm command here. Okay, but now the difference is that those files they are already located, in fact, on the SD card. So what you do, you use the U boot command fat load to in fact load those files into the memory. So for the U image, I issue this command with fat load. From the SD card, I load the U image to this address in the DRAM memory. For the device tree, device tree, and finally for in fact the root file system. I do the same thing okay now they are all loaded and what I need to do is I I just issue in fact the boot M command so the boot M and then we have the Linux kernel and then the Linux running on our Zinc system okay this is not good because we want everything to be completely automated from when the when I turn on the board to this point that the Linux gets executed, I want everything to happen automatically. I don't want to issue the fat load comments. The fact is that the U boot allows you to define the set of commands that it should run automatically after it is executed completely. So when the execution of the U boot finishes, you can define a set of commands that U boot should run them one after another okay so where is the definition of these commands in the uboot source code if we change that location of or if we double uh, check that location and see what commands can you would run automatically then maybe we can make the entire booting process automated so what i do I come back to the location of uboot source code. I have it here. So I have the uboot source code and in fact if I go to the include folder and then configs folder in this configs folder I see a large number of header files. What are these header files? These header files are the configuration information for the U-boot for each of its supported hardware targets. For example, for Texas Instruments OMAP, U-boot supports, U-boot supports all of the Texas Instruments OMAP series, and for each guy, there's a file. Each file also contains the same commands, the required commands that U-boot should execute after it finishes its own loading process. So here, for our case, the one that we need is called zinc-common.h. So I open zinc-common.h and well, zinc-common.h is now symbolic link uh, to zinc-common original because later during this video I want to change this file a little bit so zinc -common .h. I open this file and if I scroll down inside this file I reach in fact a section which says default environment and then config extra env settings and then you see a large number of definitions for variables and then if I continue scrolling down through this 
I will reach a section in the source code of you which defines the default IP addresses for the board that is running the U-Boot and for the server that later as I will show you U-Boot will get connected to and then if I come to the next indeed paragraph I reach the point uh, which is kind of the most important point and it contains a definition for config boot command constant and the config boot command is in fact the variable that is defining the commands that you would should execute after it finishes its own task so what you are seeing here is that the config boot command is equal to run mode boot okay and what is mode boot mode boot is practically one of these items which are defined here these are different supported mode boots in fact for your zinc device one mode boot is nor boot one mode boot is qspi boot and this is when you want to boot from the qspi flash that one was when you want to boot from the nor flash another one un boot i don't know what it is another one usb boot nand boot jtag boot and then the rest that i don't want to talk about and one of the items that we have here is called sd boot so when in fact your u boot gets executed and you have configured your zinc device to boot from the sd card the mode boot variable the variable that i talked about here the mode boot variable will be equal to sd boot and what practically is going to happen is that when your system comes up from the sd card the mode boot variable is sd boot and the sd boot statement will be executed now if i go to sd boot statement the sd boot statement in fact is a set of commands so these commands will be executed one after another automatically and what are these commands they are very similar to what i showed you already so you have a set of fat load um, commands which are being issued one after another and these fat load commands are responsible for copying the kernel device tree and root file system into the DRAM memory and then to boot the Linux so if I look at the definition of these parameters kernel image device tree image and RAM disk image I will find out the correct names for the files that you would look for them on the SD card when it wants to in fact run the SD boot so if I look if I scroll up a little bit I will find their definition here kernel image is equal to U image RAM disk image is equal to uramdisk.image.gz and the device tree is equal to device tree.dtb. So my conclusion is that if I copy my kernel, my root file system, and my device tree with these exact names on the SD card and then I turn on my system, the U boot should automatically find these files and should bring up the Linux kernel. So um, I bring down my SD, SD card and then I change the name of those files to their exact value. The U image is already correct. The URAM disk image is already correct. And the one that is not correct is zinc-z.dtv I change this one to device 3.dtv 
So let's change this one to device3.dtv. Device3.dtv. Okay, that is it. I bring out, out my SD card and I put it back into my zinc board and then I will turn on my zinc board and I will see what will happen. We come to the PicoCom. We prepare the PicoCom. I turn on my Z board and I run PicoCom. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So the FPGA gets configured and this time I don't press enter. I allow the U boot to continue with automated boot operation. And as you see, U boot will read those files, will put them on the memory, and will bring up the Linux kernel. And this time everything was completely automated. So every time that you turn off the board and you turn it on, the in fact the Linux will come up automatically. Okay. But what if I want to change these files constantly? What if I'm developing a kind of driver or something and I need to change device tree and the Linux kernel every time. So I want also to be able to tell you boot that you should load these files from the network. So I want to be able to in fact remove these files from the SD card to keep only boot.bin file on the SD card and to be able to load the rest from the network. And this is something completely possible using U-Boot. So, if I turn on my zinc board, and this time I don't allow the U-Boot to go through the automated booting process, if I look at the commands that I have here, I have also the TFTP boot command, which allows me in fact to load the contents that I want from my TFTP server in fact to the DRAM memory and this is what we are going to do so what we are going to do now is I load the kernel image the device tree and the root file system using the TFTP boot command from my notebook to the DRAM memory of the Z board and then I start the kernel from there okay so in order to do that successfully, obviously you need a cable connect, connecting your notebook to the Z board. And the second thing is you need to be executing, in fact, the TFTP server on your notebook. Okay, so if I want to say more specifically, before doing any of these steps you should make sure that the TFTP server is running completely fine on your notebook and is responding to the incoming requests this is a, can be a kind of tricky step okay so before I continue I turn off my Z board and I double check if the TFTP server is running fine on my notebook in order to check if TFTP server is running fine or not, I can use the service command. So I say service minus minus status all and then grep TFTP. Oh, okay. Anyway, the grep was of no use. TFTP is here, so the service is installed. So what I can do, I can probably say sudo service TFTP DHPA restart. This way, I'm pretty sure that the TFTP server is running. By default, when you install the Ubuntu on your notebook, this service is not running. You should run it and you should test it and you should make sure it's working fine. So the next step is you should make sure that the files that you want to serve to your Z board over TFTP, they are located in the correct position 
on your notebook the position at which by default the tftp server looks when there there's an incoming request is var lib so you go to slash var slash lib and then you go to tftp boot and then here you have the files that the tftp server practically serve when in fact there's an incoming request from the z board and now one very important other thing is that the permission of these files that you have here it should be read permission for all of the guys in the world or practically let me show you so you issue the command chmod group user and other plus read for example you image so you make sure everybody has read access to this file and then make sure that this file belongs to nobody and the group no group so sudo ch own uh, nobody two points no group and then the name of the file you image so these are the steps that you do for every file that you copy to this folder and now that I have copied these files to this folder, let's try it. So before I go to the Z board, I come here, just the folder, so you to slash temp. And then inside the slash temp, I, I do a TFTP to myself. So what I do, I say TFTP and then my IP address, whatever it is. Okay, what should be my IP address? My IP address should be the one that was indicated as the server IP in the source code of the U-boot, the one that I showed you. So I come here. What was the server IP? The server IP we saw it together. It's for our test. The server IP is 10.10.70.101. So what I do, I come here. I say sudo ifconfig eth0 10 10 70 101 okay so now I have it 10 10 70 101 and now what I should do I should say tftp to 10 10 70 101 and now what I should do, I should grab one of those files um, out of my, those files that were in slash var slash lib slash tftp to boot to make sure that everything is working. So I say get. And then let's grab the device tree because that one is the smallest. Zinc z dot dtb. This shows that I am able, in fact, to connect to my TFTP server and to grab a file. And it's a kind of very important step in the test that you do to make sure that the TFTP server is working. And if you don't pass this test, you don't need to go to the rest of the what I am going to show you. You should solve this problem. Okay, now, now I come back to the story the story is here we have the files and i run the picocom again and i turn on my in fact um, my zinc board so the zinc board is on i run the picocom and then i don't allow the u-boot to boot automatically what I should do, I should issue a set of TFTP boot commands to load the kernel, the root file system, and the device tree to the DRAM. And here is how I issue, in fact, those commands. So um, the first command for the Linux kernel would be something look, looking like this. I am going to grab the U image from this IP address, I want to put that onto this address on the DRAM memory. Okay, so this is the step that you do. 
and then um, in fact you would begin grabbing the content of the file from your tftp server and if everything is going fine you will see this sign and if there is a problem there is something is not working fine then you will see this sign and this is very probable especially when your notebook is connected to for example a wi-fi or it has two network connections or something like that and there's something uh, not working with the network so let me just make sure that everything is correct yeah as you see the eth0 doesn't have that ip address anymore so sudo ifconfig eth0 10 10 71 Yeah, so we received the U image. And then I issue the command, similar command, to receive uh, the device tree, device tree. And then another command to receive uh, the URAM disk. URAM disk. I think I have I have problem with my uh, Wi-Fi. Yeah. So URAM this is also fetched, and now all of these guys are fetched. So I can issue the boot m command. So boot m and we have the Linux kernel and the Linux running. The final step that I want to show you in this video. I want also this process to be automated okay so booting over the network I don't want to issue the commands one by one in you with myself but I want these commands in fact to be replaced by those commands which are already there inside the u boot uh, zinc dash common dot h file so what I do is that I come here and I come here to the SD boot and instead of these these commands instead of the fat load I use the TFTP boot and I keep everything the same as before so I have the modified version of the file that I show you that is in So here is how this will look like. So I have the SD boot with new command, TFTP boot. And now what you do is that you compile the U boot with this new change that you have made. And since then, when the U boot gets executed from the boot.bin over the SD card, it issues these three commands it loads the u image root file system device tree and then it starts the kernel okay i don't do this step anymore i have uh, but i'm pretty sure it is working so there shouldn't be any problem and i think yeah this is the end of this video i think it's there is no more thing to say the last point that I want to mention is that there is one other, in fact, way of booting the Linux on a Z board or any other, or most of the other, in fact, Zinc based boards, and that is from the QSPI flash, okay, or any flash memory which is resided on the board. So I will probably create another video for QSPI flash separately, but the whole thing can be copied to the QSPI flash and you don't need to use even the SD card anymore. Okay, that is it for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Mohammed Sadri. These videos are hobbies. 
they don't come with any guarantee if you like my videos support uh, creation of the videos with donations of course bye